A man is reunited with his beloved childhood teddy bear, but when he takes it out of the box, he turns out to be a psychotic who starts eliminating each of his family members. Today we recap the story of, Benny Loves You, from 2019. Ashley is a very annoying girl who is spoiled by her mother. Since she always gets everything she wants, she values her toys very little and always abandons them or throws them away when she gets a new one. After receiving her most recent gift, the Barella doll and her dream house, the girl totally ignores her old teddy bear named Todd and abruptly throws him in the toy bin, abandoning him like she did all the others. But during the night, the closet door slowly starts to open and a bizarre thick smoke starts to pour out of the toy box as Todd whispers very slowly, causing Ashley to wake up at the noise. Upon awakening, the girl stares at the closet door looking for the source of the sound when suddenly the demonic bear jumps in front of her, terrifying her from the jump scare. With the fright, Ashley gives a very scandalous scream that ends up attracting her mother's attention. Angry that her daughter is making noise in the middle of the night, the woman doesn't even give the girl a chance to explain herself and puts the bear back in the box, while telling Ashley to be quiet and go back to sleep, but as soon as the mother goes back to her room, Todd opens the box once again and starts playing with the girl's psyche, running around the room as if she were in a macabre game, until suddenly the possessed teddy bear disappears and Ashley decides to look for it but she can't find it. But when she gives up the search and looks up, she sees Todd inside the dollhouse she won earlier, and takes an absurd fright, giving a loud scream that deafens any person. Frustrated that her daughter won't obey her and continues to make noise, the woman angrily gets up and goes to Ashley's room where she gives her a supreme slap that would be worthy of taking the slapping championship belt. Tired of the whole situation, the woman picks Todd up and puts him to bed next to her daughter without imagining that the bear is more possessed than Annabelle. When the girl tries to beg the woman to take the stuffed animal away from her, the mother simply ignores her and tells her to shut her mouth, but as soon as they are alone in the room, Todd slowly turns to Ashley and drags her around the room until he traps her in the crate. The mother hears the generalized beating and goes to her daughter's room, but when she opens the closet door, she finds Ashley already lifeless and without her eyes. Seeing that scene, the woman is unresponsive, but when one of the girl's eyes starts to roll and touches her foot, she goes into a state of panic and screams even louder than her own daughter. Across town, Jack, a very frustrated toy designer who is dissatisfied with his life, is competing with a colleague named Richard for the position of creative director at the toy box company. To make matters worse for the man, his parents were preparing a surprise for him on his birthday, when the old man ended up stepping on a toy car and fell, hitting his head on the floor. Upon impact, the flimsy drywall of the house begins to shake, knocking a massive statue onto the man's head, which causes his brains to burst and fly all over the wall. Unsuspecting of what has happened to her husband, the wife comes from the kitchen carrying the cake and trips over the man's body, falling face first into some skewers that pierce her face and take her life within seconds. Ten months after this tragic and unusual accident, Jack's life continues to go from bad to worse and now he is about to lose his house to the bank. As the designer has stopped paying the mortgage, the bank's accounting manager has been going to the house frequently to try to convince him that the best option is to sell the house and pay off the debt, but Jack refuses to sell because he would have nowhere to live. To make things even more difficult, Ron, Jack's boss, calls him into his office and instead of promoting him as expected, he demotes the extremely unlucky designer, along with a considerable pay cut. With no way out, Jack finally decides to put his house up for sale and while he is packing his things for the move, he finds his old stuffed animal named Benny, which he got from his mother when he was still a child with the mission to protect him from the demons of the hallway and any other threat. Determined to change the course of his life, he puts the pet back in the box and puts it in the living room. During the night, the same thick smoke that came out of Ashley's toy box also comes out of the box where Jack put Benny, but this time redder. It seems that there is something very wrong with the toys of this city, because just like Todd the teddy bear, Benny also comes to life without explanation, and as soon as he becomes aware, the possessed animal takes a pair of pliers and cuts the house wiring, leaving it totally without power. Thinking it's a possible intruder, Jack grabs his very powerful toy lightsaber and starts down the stairs where he finds his childhood toys totally screwed up. Arriving in the living room, the designer finds all of his old stuffed animals totally destroyed, as well as Benny sitting on the carpet surrounded by the destroyed toys like a macabre cult. As if the situation wasn't strange enough, Jack decides to call the police to investigate the attack on his pets, but while they are talking and eating some cookies in the closet, Benny who was on the designer's lap suddenly disappears in front of everyone, leaving the trio quite confused. After the pair of police officers leave, Jack begins to receive several calls from the accounting manager collecting the mortgage and threatening to evict him if he continues to fail to pay, but he ignores all messages. In the middle of the night, the designer hears someone knocking on his door and goes over to answer it, 
but the only thing he finds is a pen lying on the floor. When looking at the back of the house, Jack sees that the door was open and goes there to see what was going on and finds Benny Bear standing asking to play. Believing it to be a bad dream, the man goes back inside and goes to sleep, but at dawn Jack is faced with the manager's head on his bed completely bloody. Without understanding what is happening the designer goes into shock, but his panic increases even more when he sees Benny coming towards him with a knife in his hand. Suddenly, Benny leaps out at Jack who is shouting his pants off thinking he's going to be eliminated by his own teddy bear, but as he falls onto the bed, Benny sticks his knife into the banker's severed head and strikes a pose as if he's in a show. Soon after that, someone starts knocking on the door and when he leaves his room to answer it, Jack finds an extremely terrifying scene, with traces of blood all over the house and the manager's body sitting on the table bareheaded and with all the organs out. In shock at the true slasher scenario his home has become, Jack eventually forgets the person who was knocking on the door, but regains consciousness when the banker's severed fingers are thrown out of the toaster. Looking out the window to see who was knocking, Jack realizes that of all the possibilities, without a doubt this was the worst possible visit, who is calling at the door is precisely the pair of policemen who visited him last night. Even though it was risky, Jack opens the door and starts talking to the officers who came to get the camera they forgot there and ask some more questions about the invasion. Knowing that they would enter the house, the designer closes the door abruptly with the excuse of changing clothes and rushes to hide the body and clean up that mess, after all they would not believe him if he said that who did it was a teddy bear that had been kept in a box for the past 20 years. After cleaning everything up as quickly as possible, Jack finally lets the cops in, but to his dismay the first thing the officers do is show him a picture of the manager saying he's missing and asking if the designer has seen him in the last few days. Although extremely nervous and with the police almost finding the man's head in the cupboard where the cookies were, Jack manages to lose them and make them leave his house. Extremely frightened by the situation and not knowing what to do, the man makes a bad decision and decides to continue with Benny, as well as burying the manager's body in his backyard. Even with all this chaos, the fact that the teddy bear gains consciousness begins to change Jack's life, giving him the idea of creating a new line of toys totally inspired by Benny, both in appearance and functionality, which makes him regain some morale with his boss and puts him back in contention for the position of creative director. As he is developing super tech toys that can walk and even fight each other, Ron puts Jack to work with Don, an engineer who is in charge of creating and programming the voice controls and motion sensors. As they develop the projects together, the two co-workers begin to get closer and closer and realizing that Jack would not have the courage to ask her out, Don arranges a dinner with the man at the house where he lives, but there is a small problem in all this, Benny. As if this wasn't a worrying enough situation, Ron decides to go out with his family and asks Jack to look after his dog while they are away. While the designer thinks about what to do to prevent Benny from ruining his love life and professional life, his house is being visited by a realtor and a potential buyer, but during the visitation, the maniacal bear appears behind the man and crosses his body with the for sale sign. Frightened, the woman has the brilliant idea of hiding under the pillows, and sadistic as he is, Benny takes the opportunity to throw scalding water in her face, totally burning her face. Desperate, the girl runs to the second floor and when she finds a ladder, she decides to hide in the attic where she could call the police, but to her misfortune she ends up dropping her cell phone, getting stuck and incommunicado. Upon arriving home, Jack sees the body of the realtor and is extremely furious with Benny as he once again risks being arrested because of his psychopathic teddy bear. After tidying up the mess and burying another body, the designer puts Benny back in the box and after making him promise not to leave under any circumstances, the man locks him in a room just to make sure but the genius left the key in the lock. With things apparently calmer, Jack begins to prepare things for his special meal with Don without suspecting that in the next room Benny has managed to get out of the box and is looking for a tool that he can use to get out of there, but realizing that his owner is extremely stupid and left the key on the door, the teddy bear takes advantage of Jack's imbecility and manages to get the key with ease, finally freeing himself, but not before taking an axe with him, unsuspecting of what the possessed beast is planning. Jack goes to answer Ron who is at the door bringing his dog, but as he is not a fan of dogs and wants to go back to his meeting, he simply lets the animal go and leaves him walking around the house. While Jack and Don are chatting, the dog has the misfortune to run into Benny, who hurls his axe at Ron's dog, smashing her body against the wall and puncturing her chest. Unaware that Benny exists in the monstrosity he has just committed, Don tells Jack about an equally possessed doll she had in childhood named Amy. Amy was Don's favorite doll, but as her father thought the toy looked very strange and diabolical, he decided to disappear with the object. The night before his daughter's birthday, the man got up to go to the bathroom as he normally did, but when he was going downstairs, he tripped over Amy who simply reappeared out of nowhere and broke his neck. 
Apparently the doll Don had came to life the same way Benny and Todd did, and to get revenge she pushed the little girl's father down the stairs, taking his life. As Don tells her story, Jack sees that Benny has managed to break free and is carrying the dog's lifeless body through the house in a terrifying way. Going after the teddy bear more psychopathic than the Joker, Jack finds the doggy's stiff corpse hanging by its collar and to try to hide it from Don, he stashes the corpse in the washing machine before she sees anything. While looking for her companion around the house, the woman sees Benny holding a knife and believing him to be the prototype Jack was using to develop the toys, picks him up on her lap without imagining what this monster might be capable of. Realizing Benny is jealous and wants to eliminate Don, Jack manages to convince her to go to his room while trying to arrest the bear. But when he is talking on the phone, Benny takes the dog once again and drags the body of the lifeless dog around the residence, but this time he ends up arriving in the room where the woman is. Knowing that it will be the end of him if anyone finds out that the puppy is no longer alive, Jack runs after the two, but when he enters the room and finally manages to reach the body, he realizes that it is already too late and as a way of trying to get out of it, he pretends that the puppy would attack Don and starts to stage a body fight with the pug. Then Jack throws the lifeless body out the window, but Ron has already returned and is parking in front of the house to get his pet back. But he stops right where his employee threw the dog's corpse, causing the body to crash on the windshield. Seeing that his beloved puppy has passed away because of his designer, Ron immediately fires him and asks him to go to the office to pick up his things on Monday, but when he finishes collecting his belongings and is leaving the building, he finds that same pair of police officers talking to the secretary. When they see Jack at the scene, the officers immediately call him to talk and show him some photos they found on the camera they went to get from the young man's house, they were photographs of Benny with the banker's body and head. Jack then goes home determined to end Benny and all this nightmare he created in his life. But when he arrives at his residence with a chainsaw to eliminate him, the man realizes that the teddy bear Nothing Cute prepared a birthday party for him just like his parents did, with cake and gifts. Seeing the affection Benny feels for him, Jack eventually weakens and gives up on destroying him, but he is still quite upset about losing his job and decides to lie down to rest. During the early hours of the morning, Jack who is in a deep sleep is woken up by Benny who enters the room to pull his blanket and starts dragging it to the living room where he finds a person wrapped with gift paper. Upon unwrapping, the man realizes that the person Benny kidnapped is actually Ron. Although at first he thinks it's crazy and tries to release his former boss, Jack thinks better of it and realizes it's a good opportunity to fix things. He then blackmails Ron by saying that he will release him as soon as he has his job back and on top of that receiving double the salary, and as he has no options the businessman accepts. Believing that his problems are all but solved, Jack begins to humiliate his boss into submission, but Benny screws things up once again. When the designer is satisfied and begins to finally let Ron go, the bear throws a trowel that goes through the businessman's windpipe, taking his life instantly. With his last chance to fix his life going down the drain, Jack is totally furious, and as a way of trying to please him, Benny rips out Ron's heart and gives it to him as an apology. Determined to put an end to this chaos once and for all, the designer traps the teddy bear in a coffin and heads to a forest far from his home to bury him. Thinking that the problem was solved, Jack returns to his residence in the next day while cleaning up the mess that Benny made, he is visited by Don who went there to get the prototype, but the man calls her to talk and even after that totally traumatic situation, the woman manages to forgive him and return to be his friend. In the forest, Benny manages to dig himself out and walks back home quite saddened that Jack has thrown him away, but when he arrives at the residence and sees that Don has slept there, the teddy bear begins to follow her and manages to infiltrate her car while she goes to the company. When she arrives at the building Don goes to her office and starts working as normal, however Benny has also managed to get in and is met by Richard who thought the woman had convinced the designer to deliver the prototype. Upon waking, Jack realizes that Don has gone to work, but sees several messages that Benny left scattered around the house, and knowing what the bear is capable of, he rushes to the company to try to stop him from making a carnage. Arriving at the toy box building, Jack finds Benny piercing Richard's hand with a knife. With the panic in place, Don and the two designers flee and put a chair at the door as a way to prevent the hooded stuffed animal from following them, but they forgot that along with them there were dozens of other employees who, without having a way to escape, are massacred one by one by the psychopathic bear. After arriving at the company's parking lot, the trio gets in the car and goes to Jack's house, where they set up several traps for Benny, in addition, modifying an old toy robot that Jack had designed before all this madness happened, turning it into a dangerous machine. At the same time, Benny manages to get out of the room he was trapped in and takes advantage of the fact that he is in a company that develops toys and gets a real arsenal to go after his targets. As he approaches the house, Benny enters through the sewer pipe and manages to access the interior through the toilet. 
In the bedroom, Don is waiting for the bear to show up when she notices a box on the nightstand, but when she opens it, she realizes it was the Amy doll that took her father's life. Afraid of what the doll would be able to do, the woman tries to run but has her heel cut and unable to walk, begins to crawl to the first floor. Arriving at the bottom of the house, Don is cornered by Amy who throws her knife at her, but the woman manages to defend herself and catch the knife. As without the weapon her pursuer is nothing more than a toy. Don manages to get up and hits a peck on the toy. Amy starts running back to her room, but is chased by the woman who starts stabbing her in the bed until she turns into an inanimate being again, finally avenging her father's elimination. In the living room, Richard receives a package with a robot, an old project he developed for Toy Box, but when he opens the box, that same thick, red smoke starts to come out of the object, with Richard trapped and backed into a corner, Roscoe uses his robotic hand and opens a tear in his abdomen, and as if that wasn't enough, the robot takes the vacuum cleaner and shoves it into the wound, sucking Richard's organs into the appliance until it takes his life. Finally, Jack finally finds Benny and tries to burn him with his flamethrower, but the ninja bear manages to dodge quite easily. The designer then takes his modified robot and puts it to fight with the dark bear. But even with the modifications Benny manages to jump on the back of the robot and break his wiring, in addition to crossing the robot's body with his blade. After all these malfunctions, his carcass and system are totally damaged and he can no longer continue the fight, simply turning off. After taking Richard's life, Roscoe goes to Jack to eliminate him, but he and Benny start a dispute to decide who will take the designer's life. Despite all his stolen equipment, the stuffed animal has no chance against the extremely technological robot and is at an extreme disadvantage, but when he is about to eliminate his target, Roscoe ends up activating one of the traps that Jack prepared and has his back pierced by some nails, generating critical damage to his system that simply bugs and makes him walk without direction. Even after being thrown away, Benny still loves his owner and finally alone with him, the bear just punches the designer in the face and runs to his room so he can take Don's life and be the only one in Jack's life again. With Benny holding his very powerful toy katana against the woman's neck, the man knows that if he makes any sudden moves the ninja bear will not hesitate to take Don's life. He then pretends to give up on the girl and calls Benny to hug him, but as soon as he takes the bear on his lap, Jack pulls the knife that was hidden in his pants pocket and has a chance to finally end this nightmare, but for some reason, Don takes the most imbecilic attitude possible and rips Benny out of the man's arms. Just then, the police arrive at the residence to arrest Jack, and determined to save his owner, the maniac teddy bear jumps out the window over Don and starts running towards the officers. Seeing the stuffed animal running around with a knife, they start shooting at the creature and manage to land several shots on Benny, finally turning him back into just an inanimate toy. Unsure how to explain the whole situation involving a teddy bear to their superiors, the cops cover up everything that happened and allow the couple to escape, leaving Jack and Don unpunished to get on with their lives. And so ends Benny's antics. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.